Hello, everyone. Thank you for waiting and welcome to this online event from Pearson. Before we get started, I'd like to go over some few housekeeping items so you will know how to participate in today's event. Before we discuss how to download any associated materials and use the platform, I would like to inform you that this session will be recorded for regulatory purposes and for our quality assurance. You will have the opportunity to submit text questions to today's presenter anytime by typing your questions into the chat box, which is located at the bottom right side of your screen. You may also use the same chat box if you have any questions or concerns about today's event. The chat box is for sharing ideas with the whole group, and anything you type into this window can immediately be seen by other delegates in the room. To enter a question or a comment, type into the bottom section of the chat window and hit enter on your keyboard. You may also use the same chat box for assistance in case you encounter any technical issues in viewing or listening to the webinar content. At this time, everyone is joined on mute, but will have the control to unmute themselves, so please stay on mute if you don't need to speak. To go for questions, click on raise hand at the menu bar at the bottom. If you don't see this, click on the icon labeled participants and select raise hand. Otherwise, try holding the alt and the letter Y on your keyboard. All right, that's all I need to go through for now. Our presenter for today is Jeffrey Hole, and it's with great pleasure that I hand you over to him now. Thank you, please go ahead. Hi there, thank you. Um, good afternoon and welcome to the AS level and A level music technology uh, support session. Um, there's an update for summer 2022. Um, just as an overview and a, an agenda for the session is um, having a look at the, the current situation and how we've got to this point. Um, then we'll run through the various um, adaptations uh, that are in place for component one and component two, um, and then have a look at component three and four, and then around advanced information. Um, and then we'll go through uh, some information uh, that uh, details how information uh, can be used, uh, when it can be used, um, and a little further detail around that as well. Um, that uh, applies to component three and four. So um, as an overview of the situation, um, the outcomes of the consultation for NEA um, were published on the 16th of June 2021. Um, and that confirmed that the arrangements that were in place for summer 2021 submissions um, would carry forward to 2022 submissions. Um, there was also a consultation on the arrangements for summer 2022 that focused on the exam components um, and that closed on the 1st of August uh, 2021. And then we had the outcomes of that published on the 30th of September 2021. That consultation and the outcomes from that confirmed that exam boards uh, would provide advanced information about the focus of the content of the exams for all GCSE, AS and A-level subjects, except GCSE, English Literature, History, Ancient History and uh, Geography um, for the summer 2022 exams. Um, DfE has confirmed that advanced information will be provided by 7th of February 2022 at the latest, um, and we're heading up to that date quite close now. Um, so a guidance document giving some detail um, about the presentation of advanced information um, was published online on the 9th of December as well. Um, so you've got that available. And this session really outlines some of that as well. So looking at component one um, and the changes to NEA here, um, I'm sure you're all familiar with anyway. Um, is that the brief was released on the 15th of September um, and the changes to and the adaptations to NEA were that capture uh, had been removed as a requirement of the component. Um, Pearson uh, would provide the audio files for students to create a mix um, and students should emulate uh, the original recording as provided by Pearson. Um, the recording length is determined by the audio files provided by Pearson, um, but for AS level, that would be between one minute 30 seconds and two minutes. 
and for A level that would be between two minutes and three minutes. So therefore um, assessment grid one um, isn't used as that assessed capture um, and then the component will continue to be externally assessed by an examiner um, but because of assessment grid one being removed the recording would be marked out of 48 um, rather than uh, 60 and a scaling factor uh, would be used to ensure that the correct weighting um, remains in the specification. Um, if you are looking for details around the scaling factor um, on the uh, general uh, summer 2022 support pages um, on the Pearson website, um, there is a, a document that outlines all the scaling factors for each component where we've had to use this as well. Um, the submission um, for um, NEA has remained as the 15th of May, so that uh, needs to be submitted by the 15th of May 2022. For component two, um, again, uh, the brief was released on the 1st of September 2021 um, as uh, normal. Um, the live capture um, is permitted but students would not be disadvantaged if they didn't use live capture in their technology-based compositions. The duration of the technology-based compositions um, was changed. Um, and for AS level, uh, that has changed to one minute, 30 seconds. And for A level, that's uh, two minutes. So um, had some questions here and there come in around that. And those are set times so composition should last for those durations um, and shouldn't go over or under as there are um, various uh, penalties um, depending on uh, if they're under or over um, and that's outlined in the specification. So there are no changes uh, to the mark scheme for this um, and uh, again the cone component would continue to be externally assessed by an examiner. Um, they'll continue to be marked out at 60 and the submission is by the 15th of May 2022. So for component three and component four, the exams are intended to go ahead in summer 2022. Um, DfE and Ofqual, as previously stated, published the joint consultation on the outcomes on the 30th September. Um, and that outlines the, the advanced information about the focus of the content of the exams um, for GCSEs, AS and A-level subjects uh, would be provided, um, apart from those uh, listed there. And that advanced information is going to be provided by 7th of February. So really, this is going into a bit of detail around what advanced information is um, now and how it can be used. So advanced information is intended to communicate in advance some of the aspects of the specification uh, that will be assessed in the exam papers. Um, information will detail the focus of particular aspects of the exam. Um, so for example, that could be uh, certain content, context, text, topics, subtopics, uh, themes and skills that will be assessed. Um, it's intended to support revision um, in time in the time before the exams as well. So the advanced information doesn't require any changes to the question paper structure, um, which means that the exam assessments will be familiar to teachers and students. So um, you can still use um, past papers to prepare students. Um, it will allow continued uh, relevance of associated assessment and teaching resources. Um, and um, this, it will support student confidence. Oh, oh my God. Um, hopefully you can still hear me. Um, my computer just had a bit of a meltdown there. Um, so uh, 
it will uh, support student confidence in minimising uh, the unexpected in the layout or structure of question papers. Um, so this doesn't particularly apply to uh, music technology as we are the sole providers, um, but different qualifications uh, require different advanced information solutions uh, to maximize the value of the approach. Um, so that does mean that while there is a common approach across specifications um, within each subject at a particular level, uh, that approach looks uh, like uh, it could be different across different specifications as well um, because it's tailored to suit the individual approaches of the assessment um, for each specification. So uh, the advanced information will not always detail everything that is in the exam as well. The key principles um, are that we've avoided providing so much detail that answers um, to likely questions could become pre-prepared or memorized. Um, and we've made sure that advanced information doesn't undermine the value of the qualification in supporting student progression, um, that it doesn't directly provide answers to other potentially low tariff questions, um, and it doesn't compromise the capability of the exam to sufficiently differentiate between students as well. So advanced information can be used from the point of release um, and it can be used flexibly by centres to achieve its purpose of supporting revision. The one thing that it shouldn't do is uh, narrow teaching and learning. Okay, so um, you can use it to uh, prepare mocks and things like that and, and tests that could focus on the um, advanced information that is released, um, but you should continue to teach uh, the content of the specification as you normally would. Um, the advanced information can't be brought into uh, the exams. Um, it will not be at a level that allows questions to be predicted or answers prepared. Um, and the presentation will, of the advanced information will take the most appropriate form uh, to communicate that information clearly as well. So uh, using the advanced information can be used to develop focused mock papers. Um, you can use advanced information to uh, support extended response questions um, and use past papers exemplars uh, to support advanced information topics. Um, on the presentation slides here, there's links through to um, obviously past paper mark schemes um, and examiner reports to help um, in that process. And there's also exemplar material um, on the website uh, that uh, you may find useful to help prepare that as well. So um, what is included in the advanced information? Um, this is taken from the summary document um, that is released online. Um, and there's a, a link through to that as well. Um, so the advanced information for A-level music um, is that it will apply to component three, listening, analyzing, and component four, producing, analyzing only. So it's only those uh, two uh, components. For component three, it will provide information on the eras of the comparison songs uh, and the topic area of the wider context um, question as well. For component four, um, it will provide information on the main topic areas. Um, and if relevant, the instrument and whether it relates to either capture, processing, mixing, synthesis, or sampling. Um, there is a little uh, proviso uh, that goes alongside that that says topics not explicitly given in the advanced information could may still be assessed in low tariff items or synoptic questions in on the paper as well. Um, but the advanced information is there to give the broad outline for usually the higher tariff questions um, that are in the paper. Um, for AS level music technology, um, it is uh, very similar, in fact, uh, 
basically identical in terms of the advanced information uh, that is available. So again, it applies to component three and four only. And for component three, it will provide the information on the eras, the comparison songs, and the topic area of the wider context. And for component four, it will provide the information on the main topic areas, um, and if relevant, the instrument and whether it relates to either capture processing, mixing, synthesis, or sampling. And again, there is the, the bullet point around the, the advanced information and topics that not included in that may still be assessed in low tariff items on the paper. Um, there's some useful links here um, through to um, various different things. So there's guidance, um, documents for summer 2022 for A11 and AS. Um, there's FAQs. Um, there's a summary of assessment arrangements. There's a link through to the general support page for summer 2022. Um, and I would also encourage everyone to sign up to receive the uh, general qualifications bulletin. Um, that includes the latest information uh, as we go into summer 2022 um, and the assessment series. And there's also a JCQ uh, guidance document for teachers on the use of advanced information as well. Um, now, uh, really, it's time uh, to allow you to ask any questions that you uh, want to clarify anything. Um, there is a question uh, that's come in about what is meant by synoptic questions. Um, so synoptic questions uh, would draw together the learning uh, through the whole of the uh, qualification um, or the uh, component there. Um, so that's usually um, the higher tariff questions um, as they may bring in other elements um, from, from that component um, into their answer. Um, so uh, that's uh, usually what's uh, meant by the synoptic questions there. Hopefully that answers uh, you there. Um, and uh, someone has asked around, sorry for this silly question, how are the audio MIDI files normally delivered to the students in component three and four? Is it a CD or digital file they download online? Um, so um, the intention for summer 2022 is to mainly move to a download service um, where your exams officer uh, would sign up to uh, that service and access the um, audio materials uh, for um, each of those papers, and they can download that 24 hours um, in advance. Um, centres could, if they want, still request uh, CDs to be sent to them um, with that material on, but the intention is to mainly move to um, the digital download uh, process with that. Um, in regards to component one, will the students be penalised if they don't correct timing errors uh, in the provided drumming tracks? Um, so students are expected to uh, replicate the uh, mix with that. Um, looking at the task and what they're expected to do and where correcting those timing errors would fall, um, it, uh, they've got to weigh up if how much impact that would have on their overall marks uh, going through that process um, and if uh, that would make a significant difference to them. Um, so that's kind of the general answer to that. It's, it's looking at that task and, and how that would impact their overall marks overall if they did or didn't correct those errors. The files that are provided do include the general sorts of problems that students would encounter um, when they you know, record the material themselves. And uh, they can obviously 
make those decisions um, when they are uh, mixing. Uh, so does two minute composition time include reverb tails, etc. So yeah, I mean, composition should uh, be ending on two minutes. Um, and that usually uh, would include reverb tails as well. Um, there is usually a little bit of leeway either side depending because of different audio players, um, how they in interpret the time code on that. Um, so maybe one second over or under, um, but uh, yeah, composition should be planned to, to uh, complete on two minutes there. And do you have a specific date for the release of the advanced information? Um, well, I mean, the, the term is that it's uh, 7th of February at the latest. Um, so, and, and we're heading up to that date now. Um, so I, uh, that's the kind of information there. So realistically, um, I think we're heading towards uh, the release of that on the 7th of Feb. Um, got some questions come in um, there. Um, are we submitting coursework online and component for project files, so audio files? Do we need to include the logic file for component four? Um, so uh, with the um, coursework, the NEA, um, the intention again with that is to move to uh, online digital submission. Um, and uh, yeah, we're uh, currently in the process of um, providing the uh, ASG for that with all the details of how you would go about that. Um, some of you may have provided um, material uh, for quality assurance processes um, from summer 2021 um, and had to upload material uh, online through that process. Um, and the online submission for NEA will work in, in the same way where there's uh, essentially a list of learners um, and you can drag and drop files with that. Um, so uh, in terms of project files, um, they're normally asked for for the NEA uh, components. Um, with the component four, um, that's usually audio uh, that's required uh, to be submitted. Um, with those but the instructions for what needs to be submitted are in the ASG um, and uh, also uh, what files need to be made by the students in the in component four are detailed would be detailed on the paper as well um, and uh, when will the digital logbooks be available for students complete uh, this is referenced in the spec but the pdf version of the logbook uh, Pearson has provided is non-editable. Uh, there are um, word versions of the logbooks available online under the exams materials tab uh, right now. Um, so um, they are available um, online. Okay. Um, so just going through some of the other questions that are in the chat now. Um, Will exam submissions be uploaded or do we have to post them to you? Um, as in, do we have to upload them once the exam has finished? Um, so yeah, as I said, the intention is to um, move to a digital submission um, for everything. Um, I've actually had a few questions come in from exams officers, I think over the last couple of days um, as they're starting to see um, some codes uh, come on on the uh, MIS systems um, for component four, um, which uh, because of the digital submission process for that, we've had to split the codes for uh, component four for the written part and the practical part. Um, so uh, yeah, so uh, that's had to happen. Um, in terms of the submission, although the, the paper works in exactly the same way. Um, so uh, yes, it, it will, the intention is to, to be the digital submission there. 
Um, is there any plans to move to up those submissions rather than sending DVD, CDs and DVDs? Um, yep. So uh, the intention is that uh, everything will be moving to the digital uh, upload system. So yeah, there is uh, plenty of uh, space for project files as well. Um, so I, when we've uh, talked about it um, as a, a process, I've brought up the, uh, the size of files that will be submitted um, for music technology. Um, so what procedures are in place for students missing exams through COVID illness? Um, so obviously, um, there is the special consideration uh, process that's in place in normal uh, academic years um, for any candidates that uh, are able to uh, sit assessments. Um, so it would be a case of going through the, the usual um, special consideration route with, with those. Um, so. Um, it should be a, a process that exams officers um, are familiar with there as well. Okay. Um, that's answered all the questions at the moment. I don't know if uh, there are any more questions going to come in. Um, I'll give people a minute uh, to type questions if needed um, as well. Someone said they're, they're typing now. So I'll give that a minute um, while I do that. Um, I'll just skip onto the, the next slide there. Um, so on that slide, uh, the various ways that you can contact uh, myself. Um, so there is the online um, support portal where you can submit uh, questions. Um, you can email teachingmusic at pearson.com. Uh, there's the phone number um, there as well, so you can phone in. Uh, and uh, there's also the uh, Pearson Music Community page um, that's uh, a group online in our community portal. Um, so you can uh, join that and submit any questions in there as well. Um, and then uh, there's also, uh, you can follow me on Twitter. Okay, uh, on the logbook, there is only 24 tracks of audio, but there are over 40 audio files provided. How would students uh, show the extra tracks? Are they permitted to make extra track section on the logbook? Um, so with that, um, if they are using um, more tracks than 24, um, then it is possible to uh, have another sheet of the tracks, um, it sh should be possible just to print out uh, another page of that from the logbook, just that page, and use an exact copy. Uh, obviously, make sure that it is uh, clearly labelled with um, the centre and student information as well. Um, but it is possible to to use an extra sheet for that as well if needed. Um, but obviously, um, in terms of that, students may also uh, condense those 40 tracks um, into less if they if they need to. Uh, yeah, so on the digital logbook, um, they could add an extra uh, sheet in there so they could uh, copy that page as well. Uh, so that's a possibility. OK, 
Okay. Um, just having a look, see if there's anything else come in. Um, doesn't look like there has been. Um, so, I mean, I suppose if there is um, any further questions um, coming in, I'll just give that a minute. But um, if not, um, I hope you found this session useful. Um, we finished uh, half an hour earlier than, than planned. Um, and uh, there probably will be another session um, uh, coming up uh, after the advanced information has been released. I'll, I plan to put another one in for those, uh, just to run through that um, and make sure everyone's kept up to date with the information as well. Um, so keep an eye out um, for uh, those sessions as well. Um, but I hope you found this useful um, and thank you very much for attending. Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes our session for today. We hope you found it useful. Have a great day and stay safe.